Well, it's another three-point edit tutorial, uh, this time for HDR video with nodes. I uh, thought I'd try something a little bit different, and that's try and force nodes to generate uh, the split streams of the HDR generated video from Magic Lantern, that is um, recording video with alternating light and dark frames. Uh, this time I thought we'd give it a go with nodes. Now, in the previous examples I've shown, you can see here I have a video strip in the uh, VSE, the Video Sequence Editor in, in um, Blender. And if I play, step through this one frame at a time, you can see that Magic Lantern, have, that um, firmware that I've installed on my Canon DSLR, um, records alternating light and dark frames. There's a dark one, there's a light one. So I have exposed for the area underneath the um, veranda, which is quite dark. And then I've also exposed for the clouds, which are blown out in the alternate frame. So I've exposed, correctly exposed. Anyway, what I've done previously was take this clip, uh, which is running uh, at double the length. So I've recorded at 25, uh, 50 frames per second in the camera, and I'm using a sequence that is 25 frames per second. So what I effectively do is duplicate each frame, make another version of this strip, and then speed change it back to 25 frames per second. Uh, anyway, what I do is I come down here, I turn on the strobe so that we double the frames. So now every frame I have is the dark frame. You can't see anybody walking through there, but there they are walking through. Now if I highlight that and press Shift D or we go to Strip and up to Duplicate Strip, I've now got a hold of this. If I press the Y key to constrain it, I only go up and down. Now I'm going vertically, I click it on there, and now I've stacked that strip on top. What I'll do now is I need these to all be light frames, so I'll scroll up to the trim duration. So the beginning of the frame will now be the one frame in. There we go. Click on there. Now every frame along there is a light frame. So now I've effectively split all of my um, light and dark frames up without having to re-render them and do name order changes or anything like that. Now in the past, what I've, the VSE doesn't have a good keyer, so there's no way for it to actually blend these two images together. So all I've been doing in the past is performing a gamma cross, which is a dissolve, but with a change in the gamma point between the two images. And I set that value at, say, 0.5, depending on the result. Now what this does is it mixes with both the dark frame and the light frame together, which is quite useful. Whoops. If I turn on the waveform, it's easiest to see it on. If I turn on the waveform, if I click on this and turn it off, the top strip, you can see what the underexposed frame looks like by itself. If I turn turn it back on, uh, we can see if I just go replace and turn it back up. That's what the overexposed image uh, showing us the veranda looks like. So there you can see we can see the dark area around here, but the sky's blown out. If I turn that off, inversely you can see that the, or conversely, you can see that the sky appears here. So anyway. I turn that back on, I go up to, let's see, Gamma Cross, and I make it about a 50% split. Now I've got lots more dynamic range. However, of course, the issue with this image is that we still get noise um, coming through in the dark area. So wherever the overexposed sky was, showing up the darks, um, mixes with the underexposed footage. Now, unfortunately, of course, the Canon DSLRs have a lot of noise in their underexposed areas and that's what you can often see in splotches of color uh, in dark areas on these images. So an alternative to acquiring the extra dynamic range like this would be to use the nodes and I've set up a group node if we change to our compositor and here we are in the compositor I'll turn on use nodes it gives us an output node I want to add the same strip. So let me see, what was that strip called? <laughs> I forget. Uh, 0, 0, 0052. Okay. So we go back to the compositor. And I want to add a image type, not a movie clip, because movie clip does not give us the ability to nudge a frame along uh, for an f image from movie offset, frame offset. So anyway, we go up to image. Oops, we click on open. 
find where my video was. Uh, looking for 52. Open that. Here is my image that we had before. Now, there is no way of knowing how long this image needs to run for. Uh, I don't believe there's an easy way of um, finding out the length of that. So I come over here to the uh, texture editor. I go to image node. Go down to open. Open the same thing. Oops, click on here. Shortcut. Down to 52. Open. Scroll down to match movie length and it says 909 frames. So I can just type up here 909 frames. There we go. Now of course when I scroll along it alternates frames again. Now we don't need that. We, what we want is to split those out. So what I'll do is duplicate that. Now when we move along we can see that they whoops, that they both update the same. Now what happens if I do this offset one? Now we get an inverse operator happening. So one will be light, one will be dark. They are going to be time offset so any movement in frame will have a slight um, misregistration but we just live with that uh, because we're shooting at 50 frames per second it should be fairly imperceptible as long as you don't do big pans or have big changes in, in the foreground vision Okay, now what I'm going to do is append a node that I imported, uh, created earlier. I'm going to go to the switch node group. I've created this node group here. It's not well named. For some reason the name doesn't accord with what you uh, title it when you want to go and append it afterwards. So go add node, go up to group, node group 001, here it is. Uh, I did give that a name, so I don't understand what's happened to our name. So I'm going to route these. This is image 1, goes into input A, another input A goes down here, and uh, input B, which we set up the alternate input, goes up to input B, and our output goes over to here. Now what's inside this node group, I hear you all asking. We'll tab into edit mode to see what's in there. So what I have done is create the two inputs. Input A goes to the up to here to this switch and input B comes uh, to the other side of this switch. And what I've done is animate this switch. So this toggle switch has actually got a keyframe on it. And the same with the um, switch below. It alternates between A and B. So what I've effectively done is make all of the light frames go to the top and all of the dark frames go to the bottom. If I jog through one frame at a time you can see the switch turning on and off and the frames up here for example stay light even though I'm skipping frames at a time and the ones down below stay dark. So I'll just tab out of there again. Let's add a viewer node up here so we can have a look at what's going on on the output view node step across a frame at a time let's jump to somewhere there's movement happening where's that man with his orange vest I saw him before there he is, walking into frame down here stepping across one frame at a time now you can see that the frame swapping is allowing us to do keys. Now you can see on the texture up here that it's changing each frame. Okay, so ha what's happening in this node group? Inside the node group, I am. Oh, let's see, it's a bit hard to see. Inside the node group, I'm splitting the dark light frames and the dark frames via the switch which we've animated. I am then changing the gamma or the roll off for the dark image so that it's uh, we're pushing up a bit closer to the uh, pushing the shadows up a bit closer to the uh, overexposed image or pulling the sky down towards the underexposed image and then on the top I am performing a key type function so I'm splitting out all of the the luminance values and using that to key the um, the underexposed shadows in. 
So what I've done is taken a key image, then I've applied this feather effect to get the roll off of that typical HDR look where it all gets very blurry and soft looking. And then I'm using that as my factor into the alpha over for when I plug in the shadows. And I should have another oops, another viewer here. I'll just duplicate that over here. That's so So you can see these shadows and what have you are being keyed in, although what it looks like is I have it reversed. So what I might have to do here is tab out of that, change this offset, reverse these so we go the other way around. There we are. That's more the icky looking HDR effect. That's a very extreme version. You can see that the the um, bl blurring is quite exaggerated. We can go back here and change this value down to, I don't know, is it 5? And that gets rid of the uh, fringing. We could invert that value, I guess, to say minus 20. It must have been minus before. Let's try 20, 20 positive. There you go, so it's eating into the side. It's the kind of uh, effect we, we've seen before. So that's keying out all the highlighted areas and using them uh, throughout the rest of the picture uh, to substitute the, uh, the burned out sky. Of course, depending on how you edit this, you'll get uh, much different results. Also, it depends on how I'm changing the value of the the luminance value uh, depending on how much I key out here so you can see I'm, not ke I'm keying out um, not all of the sky I could really make a hard mat like this come back to our blur go look at the view that's keying the sky out more completely but it's not giving us a very good edge down here So you can change the blend. So now we're getting a more smooth blend across these values here rather than a hard edge. So if I change that ramp back, you can see I'm narrowing up the keyed edge where the transition happens between the two images. Depending on how much of the detail you want to retain. And of course you can get uh, a much better effect but you have to um, use matting to cut out the areas that you absolutely want to keep. Uh, it depends on the effect that you want. So there you go. Um, less noise, uh, more artifacts, however, from this HDR type bleed edge. Uh, you could, of course, change the shape of our um, blur effect here. Um, make it a softer edge. So what that results in. You can see that the edges come back. Might to make that say minus 5. Ooh quite a glow. <laughs> Let's try two, one. Mm. Soften the edge a bit more. You can try a different type of effect. Get you that hard edge look. <laughs> So there's plenty of different things you can certainly do for your uh, keyed edge. Uh, I've just tried making it look uh, as everybody sort of expects HDR to to look. And uh, anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, brief look at using nodes in the node group. Maybe I can post the node group up to share. Thanks very much. For